Welcome to this week's episode of Inside the SPHL. This week is an awesome episode. I got an awesome guest for you. We're going to do the SPHL All-Star Fan Vote Reveal a little bit later on with Brad Harrison, my partner in crime here. But uh, but at first, as always, I have an awesome guest for you guys, and we're going to get into that. And uh, he uh, he's a Lavelle, Quebec native. He uh, he's been playing in the SPHL for a while now. Most of uh, most of his seasons have been with the Bulls, but this year recently he got a change of scenery with the Knoxville. And along with the change of scenery, it was a change of name. So uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, with uh, without further ado, here is uh, Casey Kolcheski. Casey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, James? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, man, I really appreciate you coming on. So uh, so yeah, I kind of. Let's get into this name change thing, man. For Birmingham, yeah. all these years, yeah. you know, we've been calling you Kolzicki, and now I find out that I've been doing it wrong all along. So, uh, I mean, you, technically, you have, you haven't. Um, you know, growing up, it's not like uh, I don't have any families. It's a Polish name, but I don't have any families or anything related to to the name. So it's just it's been. Uh, I know it's a hard name to pronounce, but uh, when I first came to Birmingham, um, you know, it was uh, Mr. Gold that was announcing the games and. Um, he asked me, like, how do you pronounce your name? Is it Kolziki? And I knew Mr. Gold was such, like, an icon. Yeah. I was like, yes, sure, we'll go with Kolziki. <laughs> That's <laughs> what like, we're doing. I, I, I didn't want like, to, you know, to, to say it was wrong or anything like that. So I was like, yeah, Kol, Kolziki is perfect. We'll go with that. We'll roll with that. And when I came here, they asked me the same thing. It was like, well, growing up, you know, it's my dad always used to say Kolcheski. So my mom – uh would say Kolziki and like I talked to Polish people and say Kolcheki, Kolzaiki. So I don't even know myself. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Kolziki, Kolcheski, and they won't work. They won't work. So, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Listening to some of the broadcasters around the league try to try to pronounce it's always fun, but I don't make fun of anybody because I destroy people's oh, names all the time on this oh, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so. Especially like hockey players, some are from like all over the world. So you sometimes you don't even know how to pronounce it, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I remember when uh, when I met my wife and I first introduced her to hockey because she's an Alabama girl and you know she didn't know anything about it. And we were watching. Yeah. Uh, I think it was when the I think I finally got her to watch it when the Capitals were won the Stanley Cup. And she's sitting there. She's like, "How do you say all these people's names?" And yeah. I was like, "I, I just don't." Yeah, it's <laughs> roll the tongue and like whatever it comes out comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's number eight. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. Oh, something. It's oh something. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, but cool. So, uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's jump into this, man. Let's, um, I mean, you had a, you've had a pretty good, uh, pretty good little career here, uh, playing in the SPHL, but I want to step back just a little bit. You know, when I was looking over your, uh, your hockey background, you, uh, you came to uh, New York to play some college hockey in, uh, did, Canton. Yep. Yep. What, what, what brought you to that, man? Oh, we'll, we'll have to go a bit, uh, further back. All uh, right. I was playing, First, I played only one year of junior hockey in uh, in Canada, Ottawa. It's near Ottawa. It's in Ontario, in the CCHL. That was uh, was my nineteenth year. So uh, played one year there. I knew I only had one year a shot to to get recruiters to play college hockey. You know, because I was nineteen years old. So I needed to make it happen. So uh, went there, spoke barely English, next to none. So I went to Ottawa. Luckily, I had a couple of buddies on the team that uh, spoke French, so um, uh, so I, I just winged it the entire year, trying to speak English to my coach and whatnot. But uh, soon he came, came along to one of the game. Um, coach Gilligan came to watch me play, and we had a meeting after the game. He was like, are you interested in playing uh, college hockey? I was like, yes. And I think a week later, it was, uh, it was only two two-hour drive, I think, so... Uh, me and another teammate, we went up there to, for a visit, and the uh, facility was like brand new, like 20, 20 million, I think. It was oh, brand wow. new. Was, yeah. And uh, I didn't have any plans. So I was just, yeah, sure, let's go. Let's do it. Let's play college hockey. That's yeah. how it started. Yeah. How, how was your experience there during college? Was, I mean, you did the full four years. Tell yes, me more about that. It was fun. Like, like I said, I, uh, I spoke next to, next to no English, pretty much. Yeah. So my first, my freshman year was hard, so hard. I had to like learn all these different words and like, I've been lucky and blessed to have a, a good buddy of mine, Thomas Crabtree was in my class and he, he helped me so much just like reviewing my homework and reviewing my assignments and stuff like that. So that was a huge help for me. 
And uh, it took me about a year to really like, all right, now I can do this. Like I'm, I'm more comfortable speaking English, talking English, understanding uh, the language. So uh, it was, it was fun, man. Like just the fact that I, now I'm bilingual, you know? Yeah. Not a lot of people back home are like fortunate enough to like to go to a English school. So um, having hockey too is a, such a motivational factor for me, you know, to, to do good in school as well as playing hockey. So it was very important for me and my family to, to find the balance between uh, hockey and education as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What what'd you study whenever you were there? Just English? I mean, <laughs> no, no, I was uh, so I started with the uh, health health and fitness management. Oh, okay. But then I had all these classes like chemistry, biology, oh. anatomy. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, like anatomy? Like I need to like basically relearn all like the body parts and stuff. Like I knew all, like I knew all of them, but in French, you know, it's all in English. I was like, nope. No. Change, change my major. I'll go with the numbers because a four in English is a four in French. There's no difference, right? Yeah, yeah. So I studied business management there at uh, at SUNY Kent, and uh, it was fun. A lot of hockey guys that were in my classes too, so like we could uh, help each other out. Nice, yeah. nice. That's cool. I bet you that was really a pain trying to learn English in college. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that I worked, it sucked. Working here, I worked so hard. I was always at the you know the tuition center trying like to get help, and like they would look at my assignment because I had to write a lot my freshman year, and they would look at it. It was just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, <laughs> Someone help this kid because yes. <laughs> he ain't gonna last another month here. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's I, that's awesome that you you yeah. were able to pull through and get it all out. I mean, I, I hell, I struggle trying to learn you know I, any other language. I, I only know English. I know bad words in a lot of languages. I don't know any yeah, in French. Those are but... those are easy to remember. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. That's right. So, but no, I've I've been lucky. I have a lot of people pulling on my rope, and uh, no, I've been fortunate in that in that way for sure. Nice, nice. So after uh, after you got out of college, did you go to Birmingham first or did you go to Melbourne first? Uh, so right after college, uh, I didn't have any plan. I for sure didn't think I was going to play pro hockey. Uh, I was, you know, I loved the game. I had a passion for the game. But uh, four years at Canada, we, you know, we were in the conference. So like my love for hockey was not the same, I would say. So yeah. I didn't have any plan. I was just like, all right, I guess we'll start working and uh, we'll start to get a job here. And it was about a month before the season start. I got a, a call from uh, Wheeling in the coast, the okay. Wheeling Nailers. So I was like, well, that's interesting. I'll go there. And uh, didn't work out all summer. Zero. <laughs> Like zero. You were done with hockey. Oh, I didn't break a sweat all the time. I don't even think I played hockey all summer. You know? And uh, so I had a month to get back in shape, which I don't think I did. I was just like, oh, well, I just, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> That's right. So I ended up flying to, to Wheeling, did the camp. It was all right, you know? I didn't think I was going to make it because, you know, there was a lot of guys and I was new to this at that point. So, like, I didn't know how it worked. A lot of guys coming down from the AHL. I was like, oh, my God, this guy played in the AHL. So I, like, <laughs> I had no shot here. Yeah. Like, Three a can, like zero shot. <laughs> so it didn't work out. I was like, well, well, I, I gave it a shot. So I was about to book a flight back home. And I got a call from uh, Coach Hicks in Birmingham. He was like, hey, uh, Casey, would you be interested in coming to play in Birmingham? I was like, in the SBHL, he says, like, what? <laughs> never heard of Birmingham. Never heard of the SBHL. <laughs> I was like, sure. Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> so you, get, you send me an address. So I rent the car, drove down to Birmingham, and uh, went from there. Yeah, the temperature that's, just kept rising the further you got closer to Birmingham. You're like, oh, this is supposed to be actually, winter. That's a, yeah, that's a nice perk. Like I didn't know about that, but that was sick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't have winter around here. Well, it's it's like in the fifties today. So, oh, that's that's a good temperature to play golf. I'm telling you, yeah, that's why I keep trying yeah. to tell everybody around here because I'm from a little further north of here originally too. It doesn't so. matter the temperature like down there. If it's sunny, it's it's warm enough. It's yeah. good, you know. Yeah. That's absolutely but, uh, right. I'm glad I, I'm glad I drove down to Birmingham and uh, we had quite the season that year too. So like it was, uh, and uh, that year actually like reignited the flame the passion that i have for the game 
really yeah. did that year. Yeah, because it was such a good good group of guys, and like we had a lot of success. It was like so much fun to go to a rink every day, and you know, to work with these guys. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys went all the way to the finals and yeah. tell Huntsville. We won't talk about what Huntsville did, but uh, we won't. We won't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a great season. I, I don't think I've talked to anybody from that team that is his. Uh, I mean, every or I guess I've talked. Everybody I've talked to from that team has basically said exactly what you said. They loved showing up to work every day. It was yeah. just a great group. I mean, it, so it, it, tight group. You no, know, we would go out together. We'd eat together. Still to this day, like we're still like pretty active in the group chat, and like we keep up with with what everyone's doing, you know, like our goalie Charlie the Millen got like engaged, uh, Cal Backerson, he's, you know, he's got, he's a, he's a ref now. He got some yeah. games in, the, in NHL, you know, uh, uh, Taylor Dickin just got uh, engaged as well. So like we keep, we keep up with each other, which like is good. And it, it shows you how much like, we cared about each other, how, how tight we were as a group as well. Yeah, definitely. You ever let uh, Maverick ever take you go out and fishing in the summertime? No, but I told him I would go to to his lake and fish, but I, he scares me, this guy. I don't know how, but like <laughs> from my first day in Birmingham, he kind of took me under his wing and like the, I was, I had to do whatever he said. Whatever he told me to do, I had to do it. So he's a, <laughs> scary, he's a scary guy. Yeah, and, uh, that's awesome. I, I never viewed him as a scary guy. So that, yeah, that, it's that it's that smile he's he's tricking everybody with. I know, right? That's <laughs> oh, beard. That's... That's, he kind of looks like you, but with blue eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a he's a better looking version of me. That's that's <laughs> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, and I I know the fans in Birmingham miss him every day. Hell, oh, yeah. but, uh, you you hear about him every time you talk to somebody. But uh, yeah, but no, that like I said, that was that was an awesome group. So I mean, you got any you got any good good uh, stories from that season you want want to share? Or? Oh, I mean, on the spot, I did it. See, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're on the spot. Uh, we don't have to. We can move I on. I mean, every we had a tradition as a as a group. Every Sunday, there's a bar there called uh, Gabriel's. Uh, I'm trying to not mess this one up. I'll give you the exact uh, name of the bar. It's called <laughs> Gabriel Sports Cafe. Okay. And uh, every Sunday, all the boys would go as karaoke night. So we would all go there, you know, a couple pitchers, wings were awesome. I think they were like 10 cents a wing. And all, a couple of the boys would sing karaoke. Nah. And uh, that was on a Sunday night, usually. So Monday practice, everyone was hurt. And, you know, yeah. everyone was like in the same boat. We have to battle through it. You have to work together, you know. Yeah. Everyone, everyone stayed away from Hicks because we all smelled like alcohol. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> If it's in that corner, I'll go to this corner. <laughs> That's awesome. Please tell me that Simchuk was the one up there on the on the karaoke mic. Oh, Simchuk <laughs> was a hell of a singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, so after that, then you uh, you went to a league that I didn't even know existed until uh, last year when I started talking to JM Pietrowski. You went and yeah. played in Melbourne. I mean, how how did you find out about this league? I found out three days before. I ended up there. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> At the end of the season, after we lost to Huntsville, um, 10 of us, 10 of the players, we planned a trip to, to Destin, Florida. Okay. It's about like four hours maybe to Birmingham. Yeah. So we drove down there. And at that point, I have no idea. Like for me, like I'm going back to Birmingham, packing and driving home. Right. I'm on the beach and uh, I got a call from like one of our goalies, Sebastian Anderson. He's like, hey, would you be interested in playing in Australia? I was like, what? <laughs> have hockey there? Yeah, <laughs> right? I was like, yeah, yeah, do you need a guy for just a month? Because Jam, I didn't know at that point, but Jam was still in school. And he was going to show up in Australia late, so a month late. So they just needed me for a month. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll go for a month. Yeah. Paid vacation. <laughs> and sign me up. Yeah. I didn't have any plan for the summer, so... I'm on the beach trying like to work the paperwork on my phone, sending emails on my phone to like a It's like 14 hours difference there. So I'm over there, like stress send email, paperwork, whatnot. Drive back to Birmingham, hop on a flight and uh, Australia it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, I mean, what, what was that? Uh, what was that experience? When, when, when you got there, what was that like? I mean, what was the experience whenever you oh. showed up? Tell me about that. Uh, what I, we were in Melbourne, Australia, which is like 
it's uh it's kind of like montreal new york you know big building big downtown nightlife is uh is huge there so it wasn't that much of a culture shock for me being from montreal like i know with the you know good restaurants and stuff like that so it was kind of the same thing i got you but language totally different and like the way they go about things was totally different and uh but man they love their hockey there i gotta tell you they love their hockey like really yeah, yeah we are her home ice was like packed every every home game was about like maybe over like over a thousand maybe like 1500 people it was packed every night people like standing up the stands were filled they love their hockey for some reason <laughs> that's awesome yeah. well i mean they like violent sports i know rugby is one of their sports and hockey's almost as violent it's, as rugby their, <laughs> their sport is the footy it's called Footy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Footy. footy. Yeah. I forgot about that one. It yeah. It's like soccer, rugby, football. It's it's a weird sport. To this day, I still don't understand the rules, but they, they're they maniacs for their for footy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's great. Did I, you, go ahead. I was just going to say, did you catch it? Did you catch some, a game of, of footy out there? Or? We, yeah, we went to one. Uh, GM, GM came with me for that that game. Uh, I think we stayed maybe like 30 minutes. Yeah, I was so lost. I didn't understand, like, because <laughs> it's so big. It's a big like circle, and like there's so many players on the field, and like they run around, they kick the ball, they pitch the ball. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? <laughs> it's like, People yeah. are screaming, and like, oh, I was, what happened here? We scored. We scored. Where? <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so JM, whenever he, uh, whenever he showed up, did, uh, you stayed and played after he I showed up? I stayed. Yeah. I guess they, they ended up liking me for some reason, but, uh, yeah, they decided to, to, to keep me for the rest of the season. Yeah. yeah and, uh, that's... when JM showed up, it was instant. I don't know how or why, cause we're so like different. Like he, we don't dress the same, but like, I, I feel like we like the same things or, like our, our mind are aligned yeah we became like instant to this day still like one of my best friends so like there was a bond between him and i that was like instant right right when he showed up that's awesome that's awesome so i mean yeah. tell give me some story you got you got any good good australia stories oh yeah i mean it's, I it's australia there's gotta i, I mean do. well first of all i i would recommend anyone who wants to go there who can to go because it's it's uh, you, you, first of all, you get to play hockey, which is, you know, best sport on earth. And uh, you fly everywhere, especially in Melbourne. You fly to every every game. So if you fly to, for example, Perth or Adelaide or, you know, Sydney, you stay the whole weekend there. You play two games on Friday, Saturday. And as an import, because a lot of guys, a lot of locals, they work during the week. But as an import, you can stay in the city and visit. And they book your flight back whenever you want. So you can miss practice on Tuesday. They don't really care. Wow. And uh, yeah, so you can stay there Sunday and uh, the Monday and you fly back on a Tuesday. So you can, you get to visit Australia, but like all over the map. So, which is, which is pretty nice. You know, not a lot yeah. of people get to do that. So, but a uh, good story for you. Uh, I have a pretty good one. Yeah. 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 Let's have it. So the reason why I didn't play the full, I only stayed there for three and a half months instead of four, which is when the season ends. So I got deported from Australia oh. after three after three and a half months. I don't even know I should if I should. Start, start <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you anyway. So when I first so for imports, you need a you need a visa. Every everyone that wants to visit Australia, they need a visa. Whatever visa it is, it's just holiday visa, work visa, whatever visa you need a visa. So for me, I was on a holiday visa just as a vacation, you know, because I was only supposed to be there for a month. Yeah. But my visa was good for three months, right? So I go there a month, a month passes. They want to keep me good. I don't change my visa because I don't think I was going to work anyway. But then you go out and like, you, you know, food, beers, you know, you spend a lot of your money. So went up to the, the coach, GM whatever. I was like, Hey, do you think you can get a job for us and whatnot? And I like, sure, we'll get you a job. So I ended up working. It was, you know, I was doing like labor work and jam work with me. It's too bad. You didn't ask him this question. Cause he fucking beep 
hated that job. <laughs> it was I had to drag him out of his bed every morning to go work. He, <laughs> and he was just he was just at Yale like two months ago. Yeah, yeah. I really and now, do. and now he's like and now he's like <laughs> fuck he's <laughs> He's like doing labor work, yeah. you know. Yeah. He hated. They had like construction boots on. <laughs> it's like That's awesome. Seven a.m. He's he's mopping the floor. He hated. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, we had this job for a little bit, like a month, like twenty bucks an hour, maybe. Just some, you know, some some cash to to drink and eat, whatever. Uh, but then the three month ended, so I needed to renew my visa. So they sent me to to New Zealand. They paid for my flight, everything, you know. So I stayed in, I stayed in New Zealand for three days just to visit and have fun. Fly back to Australia. They stopped me at the border. <laughs> and now like, the nightmare began. <laughs> That's where it all begins. Oh, my God. I got stopped at the border. They interviewed me for like four hours. Took my phone, my wallet. Oh, I had like the duffel bag with my clothes on. Took that. I'm in an office just like getting asked questions. So like, because I'm not on a, on a work visa, but I'm, I'm working. Yeah. You know? So they're pretty offended by that. So they're like, so are you working? I'm like, no, I'm not working. Well, who paid for your flight? Well, the team did. Who paid for the apartment? Well, the team did. Who paid for the food? Well, the team does. <laughs> uh, but it's not like at work. It's like you don't know how it works. And like they got upset. So they had me stayed in there for even longer. Now it's like 4 a.m. I got there at the airport at 10 p.m. It's like 4 a.m. now. And I'm still getting asked question after question. They took, they took my phone. And I had text messages with my GM about like work. So they knew I was like working. Yeah. So they're like, you know, you can do like real prison time if you lie to us. I was like, all right, I was working. <laughs> <laughs> you, can know, like, okay, I know. you got me. I was working. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> Busted. Working. So I was like, all right, well, you're getting denied your access to the to the country. You need to fly back to Canada. I was like, oh, there's like maybe like five games left of the season. I'm good. You know, we're not making playoffs anyway. I'll go yeah. back. Let me just run quick by my apartment, pack a bag. Get my hey clothes, and I'm the first fly out. Is no, that's not how it works. No, <laughs> mean, that's not how it works. <laughs> so they sent me to this like pretty much a prison for like <laughs> illegal illegal immigrants. They sent me there. <laughs> no phone. Like my I got my phone was like two percent battery, no charger, oh. no clothes, no food. <laughs> I got nothing. I'm in the bunk bed. Like our bedroom is about like maybe like. 10 by 10 is probably like 20 people inside the bedroom. It's oh, like chaos wow. in there. Some people have been there for like three months. Ooh. And I luckily I'll only like I stayed there for like about like 36 hours because I had to get on the next flight to Canada that had like a seat available. Yeah. It was like 36 hours later. But my parents are there calling the Can Canadian embassy, trying to figure out a solution. It's like, no, there's nothing we can do. He has to stay there. I'm like, what do you mean I have to stay there? I have to stay here? I'm like in prison. That's it's legit prison. And uh, so I finally get my flight, but they fly me to Vancouver. I'm because uh, I live in Montreal. Like, yeah, yeah, you're on the uh, wrong side of the country. Oh yeah, <laughs> but the team. They, the team was nice enough to, to fly me back to Montreal, so they got me a plane to, from Vancouver to Montreal. So I got oh, home sound and safe, but it was a hell of a, hell of a, yeah. ride, hell of a ride back from New Zealand. Yeah, man. Wow. Hell of a four days, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so if you hadn't went to New Zealand, you might have been able to just be free and clear and just fly home after those last few games, I maybe. Mean, yeah, <laughs> probably, <laughs> honestly. Probably already would just like drag me out of my own apartment. Yeah, you know, yeah. At least you could have got your stuff. Team. Yeah, the SWAT team would have busted in. <laughs> but I didn't know it was like that big of a deal. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. Wow. I, I was banned for like three years, I guess. To oh, really? Be able to get a new visa. But I think I'm clear now. So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I wouldn't want to go back to Australia after oh, having I, to go through that. I actually, I actually want to go back so bad. So like, <laughs> if anyone's listening, like, yeah. <laughs> they have contact, I want to go back. I love this yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah. Yeah. The season will be coming up in a few months and uh, you're available. That's what you're getting at, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, it was so much fun, honestly. Like, so much fun. I loved Damn. it. 
maybe maybe you can talk JM into going out there again too. We actually we actually been talking about it, and he would be up for it. He would be up for it. Yeah, yeah. See yeah. if you can grab. Just bring a bunch of SP. Well, you, they can only have two imports per team, or is it three? It's, it's four, I think. Oh, four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We had we had uh, a goalie that was Swedish, a D that was Swedish, and uh, JM American, and we had me Canadian. So yeah, we had uh, four uh, four imports. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Was the quality of hockey pretty good? I mean, competitive wise. I mean, was it honestly? Usually they make the imports play against each other, and the locals they play against each other, whatever. But uh, I mean, some locals are pretty good. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't great, but the imports are really good. Like some people play in the AHL, some people play in the NHL. Long time, like guys that played in the, you know, in Magnus and uh, yeah big time leagues in europe eihl and stuff like that oh okay so, uh, yeah so you know swiss and you know swedish league and whatnot so imports okay. are actually pretty pretty good yeah so it, when the imports are on the ice it's actually a good pretty good uh hockey yeah yeah sounds like there's some high quality hockey out there uh so i mean that's that's where everybody needs to go for uh for summertime then and, <laughs> and, and you're not getting paid too so like for them for the locals you know they have a job like eight to five during the week so like it's not like their their main job is to play hockey so for them it's more just like a happening just you know it's like a beer league for them but like yeah very, yeah very well organized beer league yeah know? yeah where yeah. Yeah. you get some really highly skilled players from around the world to come exactly. and play with yeah, yeah so exactly. that's that's every beer leaguer in the north america's dream is to have that happen to them <laughs> so. yeah you fly everywhere steak dinner after the game and yeah come yeah on. That's awesome. I can't yeah. believe that. And then that's even cool that they flew you from Vancouver to Montreal. So, I mean, that's that's yeah. awesome. They take care of their guys, too. So, yeah. no, they really do. They really do. Well, they love the imports. And, like, if you have a wife or a girlfriend, they, they're super welcoming and, like, bring them aboard and they make them, like, they pay for the food, they pay for everything. So, like, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if any other players are listening to this podcast, then I mean, you're, you're basically selling this to them. I know, so, right? I mean, you saw it. I might not even be able to go back. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're not going to make the team. Someone else, someone else is going to take my spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, never mind. He was lying about all this. This was just. Uh, yeah, it's actually yeah. not even that fun, actually. Yeah, yeah. Australia. Yeah, have you seen the bugs in Australia? <laughs> so. I haven't seen. Honestly, I haven't seen one insect, or I haven't seen a kangaroo there. No, they that? say they say you got to go into the middle of the country to find all that nastiness. I know. I was like in the pretty big city, but I haven't seen a kangaroo. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, maybe whenever you go out there this this year. Oh, I'll make sure to see one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Take lots of pictures. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. Yeah. But uh, all right. Well, so after that, you came back to play for the Bulls, and uh, and you played here for well, here I guess I'm here, but uh, but you played in Birmingham for for a few more years, and then at the start of this year, well, let's talk a little bit about your time in Birmingham before I jump ahead. I mean, t- tell me about. I mean, you you. Basically, all your SPHL career until about a month oh, ago sure. yeah. has yeah. been in Birmingham. So yeah. it, it's it's a pretty big piece of it. Kind of just tell me about. It. I mean, I mean, spending three and a half years of my life in Birmingham. You know, you you meet so many people, you build amazing relationship, and uh, still to this day, I mean, the people that I've met and you know, year after year, I was getting you know, my name was getting big bigger in Birmingham, if I can say, you know, yeah. I was getting like I was getting on a lot of like commercial for the team, which I love doing, and uh, I was really getting involved with uh, school visits and hospital visits and stuff like that. I thought it was really important to to give back to like the fans because the fans are amazing. They you know they come to every game, they support you, win or lose. So like they they received a lot of love from Birmingham, so it was important for me to give the love back as much as I could while I was there. So it became, you know, um, a good relationship with me and the city. And, you know, it was a good place to play hockey as well. You know, it, it, it gave me my love back for the game after college. So it was a big, it was a big piece uh, of my life was in Birmingham. A big part of my life was, uh, was yeah. those three and a half years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know the fans, they still love you. I mean, whenever I uh, posted on Twitter and everywhere that you got traded to Knoxville, I was worried I was going to start getting death threats. So I made sure all my doors were locked and my alarm <laughs> system was on because I'm telling you, man, people, uh, yeah, people, people love you. And I'm, I'm yeah, sure the Knoxville, awesome. the Knoxville fans are probably going to do the same. I mean, it's just, that's you. You just got that personality. And 
And I mean, your play on the ice is the kind of play that a lot of guys like to watch too. I mean, you're, you're, you're not afraid to get in the mix with anything. So, I mean, I think that may be some of, some of the th reason they like you so much. Yeah. I mean, I, growing up, I wasn't, you know, the biggest, the most talented guy, you know, I always had a chip on my shoulder. So like that carried for the rest of my career, you know, I always have to chip on the shoulder. You always have to, to earn your spot. You know, there's no, there's no guaranteed day, you know, in, in the pro sports. So that's kind of mentality. I go, I, I bring with me to the rink every day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's awesome. I mean, it, it shows. So, so then, uh, this year you actually didn't even start out in the SPHL. You, you, uh, you started out in Wichita yeah. and, or was it, yeah, Wichita and then Kansas city, right? It was Kansas city, then Wichita. Yeah. Okay. I did it. See, yeah. I, I'm horrible at my job. No, it's fine. <laughs> so, it's fine. But, uh, <laughs> but so, uh, so yeah, were you planning on, uh, were you thinking you were going to play in the coast the whole year? Or? Uh, for me, uh, this year I was kind of, after the season last year, you know, didn't make the playoff, and I was pretty upset at the end of last year. Only five teams in the league, and like, we didn't make the playoffs. So like, you know, I like I because I tasted before, you know, the playoff run in my first yeah. year. I knew like, and I really wanted to. Playoff hockey is a different animal, you know, it's a different different breed. So it really upset me. To not make the playoffs, so I just let the summer go. I was like, all right, I'll go back to Birmingham, and you know, we'll see what happens. And about again, about maybe three weeks, a month before the season started, I got a call from um, Kansas City and the coast. And you know, I kept, I stayed active all summer because I knew I was going to play hockey. So uh, I was in better shape than my first experience in uh, in Wheeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. And I was not as heavy because I was playing around like two ten in college. You know. Okay. But, so in, in Wheeling, it's about like 200 pounds. It was like, I'm like 5'7", playing at 200 pounds. I'm like a bowling ball out there. Yeah. But uh, this year was better. You know, I was, I was able to – I stayed active all summer. I was uh, working out, skating a lot. So um, got, the coach from, uh, got the call from the coach in Kansas City. And he was like very interested in me. Called a couple of my old coaches. And, uh, you know, he really sold it to me. He was like, all right, I'll come, I'll come to Kansas City. Unfortunately, I had a really good camp. Like, I'm not shy to say I had a really good camp. And um, things didn't work out. You know, we didn't expect that many guys to come back from uh, from DA. A lot of guys signed two-way contracts, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I respected his decision. And um, I had a buddy, a good friend of mine that was in Wichita. And I played with me in uh, Birmingham my first year, uh, Garrett Schmidt. Yeah. He's a pretty good buddy of mine. So I reached out to him. I was like, hey, any chance that you guys need a guy? He's like, we actually do. So he called his coach. Coach called me back. So I went from Kansas City and drove right to, to Wichita. It's about, I want to say, four hours maybe. Yeah, it's not too far. But I not too far, yeah. yeah. So uh, I was able to start the season there. I stayed there about like a month maybe, a month and a half. Uh, got in four games. Loved the experience. And um, – a lot of guys were getting hurt, called up, and whatnot. So team wasn't winning. So uh, I ended up getting released, but I love the experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's always fun to try to get a shot at the next level. I imagine. So I uh, I don't know anything about the next level. This is this is the closest I've gotten I mean, to professional. <laughs> for me, like you know, for me, like it's not about like getting to to the NHL stuff. So like just about like getting as much experience as I can. And, you know, I love the game. So yeah. Why not? And I knew Schmitz was there. And we were so tight, my first year in Birmingham and Schmitty, that it was a big part of me going to Wichita, you know, reconnect with him. So, uh, yeah, it was good. It was, it was, I was happy to, to spend a little, little time with him for sure. And that's, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And then, uh, and then you came back to Birmingham and everybody was so excited. I know. And I then, know. Uh, and then didn't you score your first game back? Score played. So I left Wichy at midnight drove through the night to Birmingham. It's about a 12 hour drive. So I got to Birmingham around 12, around noon, maybe noon or one. I had like a two hour nap or not even like maybe an hour nap. <laughs> Showed up and coach Sincha called me, you want to play? I was like, yeah, I'm here, I'll play. You know, I was like, okay, good. Played, it was against Fayetteville, it was a pretty good team. 
uh, it was a back and forth game, and yeah, ended up scoring. I think it was the winning goal. I think it was the fifth goal. You yeah, know? that was that was the eight to five comeback win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like the sixth goal or whatever. But uh, yeah. yeah, so it was good. It was good comeback for sure. Fans were excited that, that we got the win. Yeah. Yeah, fun. yeah. So I mean, so is, have you tried that trick and not getting any sleep to see if uh, see if it helps you score goals? Is that how you got the game winner in overtime the other day? Yeah, no, I'm so tired. I'm not gonna try it again. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about drive. I made that drive up through Wichita uh, a few times, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a, it'll it's 12 hours, and and you think since you're just sitting that you'll be all ready to go, but no, it drains you even oh, worse. Yeah, it's your legs not moving, your back, you know. <laughs> It was tough. It was a tough yeah. thing. It was, yeah, it's tough to, to play. But I knew, you know, been in Birmingham for three years. So I, like I knew the rink, like you know, the back of my, but back of my pocket. So, um, so I knew like all the. It wasn't like that hard because I, I played in in that rink for yeah. so long. So it was. Uh, I was. It was just. I was just so excited. Like the adrenaline. I was just so excited to be back. You know. Yeah, definitely. I think everybody was. And then the support, uh, and, the support of the crowd and stuff like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. And then I don't know where I don't I don't remember. Just, I know last year your jerseys whenever they were doing the jersey auctions, your jerseys were the ones that were always selling for more than everybody else's. So, yeah, <laughs> that's like that's what, like when I talk about getting like receiving so much love from like the fan base. That's what I'm talking about. Like jerseys going from like fifteen hundred and yeah. seventeen hundred, two thousand. Like, oh, my yeah. God, crazy man. money, <laughs> crazy like, money. Like, thank you. Like, you know. Know? yeah exactly so like so that's like whenever i can sign something or take a picture with a kid or you know make it make someone happy you know that's the least i can do because they're paying big money for my jersey so, yeah exactly uh, i mean ridiculous amounts of money the first time i went to one of those auctions i was just my jaw just dropped i was thinking like two three hundred bucks these things were going for yeah. no not a chance they're amazing wow. yeah but uh, but then after that you got traded. Tell tell me about the trade. How did you find out about that? Uh, <clears throat> went on for Christmas. I'm not gonna go into too much details about the trade, but uh, went on for Christmas and uh, you know there's a mutual respect between uh, Coach Shimmer and I. You know he was my captain my first year. Yeah, and uh, we were pretty tight. I feel like he he's one of the guys that really took me under his wing and and really showed me the way on how to you know how to be a pro and. He was such a good leader for me that I learned a lot from him as of how to be a leader. So he really, like, he's, I think he sensed, he sensed it a little bit. So he took me under his wing and showed me the way. And uh, so there's always been a mutual respect between uh, him and I. So, uh, you know, coming back from Christmas, seeing Dewis my fourth year, you know, the team is weird to say, but the team is like, was pretty young, a lot of young players on that team. Yeah. Kind of a rebuild, if you want to call it that. You know, there's, there's no really real build in the in the SPHL, but it was kind of a rebuild year. Yeah. And um, you know how much I want to win, you know. And uh, now we just uh, we sat down and we uh, we looked at uh, the option of what would be the the best fit uh, for me, you know. Yeah. And well, uh, he made it happen. I knew. I know. That uh, Coach Carr here in Knoxville has been trying to, to get me for uh, for a couple of years. Even when uh, Coach Hicks was here in Birmingham, was there in Birmingham, not here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, you know, he, he was trying to get me back then. So uh, I knew that door was open for uh, for a trade, yeah. Yeah, well, that's cool. I mean, it seems like it worked out. I mean, and that was one of those trades too. And I've said it before on this podcast. I mean, Colton Fletcher coming here, it worked out for Birmingham. You exactly, going there, yeah. worked out. So, I mean, no, no, no hard feelings on either side. I mean, I know the fans, the fans are going to miss you, but I mean, uh, I mean, they can still cheer, cheer for you in, in Knoxville. I mean, as long Absolutely, as you're not playing yeah. the Bulls, right? Well, it's a, you know, it's a change of scenery, and uh, you know, get a chance to to win the cup. You know. It's, yeah. uh, it's always been something that I wanted to do. Even like last year, the year before, ever since I got like the taste of it when I lost in the final, you know, you, you, you come so close to it that you realize, man, like it's, it's a flip of a coin. You know, it could have, it could have went either side and I was so close to it. That's like, it was really like something that I want to achieve and, you know, yeah, definitely. I mean, and and things are going good. You guys are sitting one point behind Huntsville right now in the standings. So yeah, I mean, like three games uh, behind. So yeah, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, things are looking good. So how how's it? Go ahead. You were gonna say something. No, go ahead. Maybe oh. maybe I'll answer your question. Oh, I was gonna say how how have things been going for you so far in Knoxville since you got there? 
actually good. You know, a lot of good talk with Coach Carr. Uh, he really trusts me, believes me. You know, I, I'm. I think I'm a. I'm a piece. I'm just a piece to the puzzle they already have. You know. Yeah. That. Uh, and it reminds me a lot of our team we had my first year in Birmingham. Except now I'm like one of the older guy. You know, my first year was like a rookie. Yeah. And uh, so I get to see both sides of the coin. Now I see it as an older guy, and we have. It reminds me a lot of like the, the team we had in Birmingham, and we have a lot of a group, a good group of veterans here. We have like guys like Pricer, you know, Brucato, McVeigh that have been playing against for so for three yeah. years. I hate, I hated him. He hated me. That's right. <laughs> oh, so, uh, a guy like Moore, as well as a balance with young guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Baker. I think Baker leads the league in point. So it's a good balance between older guys and young guys that are doing the job. So it's a good, it's a good mix of, uh, of old and new. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like you guys got goaltending no matter what, or no matter who gets called up or what you guys got stellar goaltending. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun to watch you guys play. <laughs> yeah. And we've been lucky to having Moisen and Steder uh, for the most part, most part since I've got here. Yeah. Yeah, whenever whenever uh, you seen Moist there, did you did you just walk up to him and be like, "Can't I get rid of you, man? We we yeah, played together I last think, year." I think, no. I think we both said that about each other. Yeah, yeah. I can't get rid of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. It's always funny whenever you see a couple of guys kind of circle back to each other in a different location. So, yeah, and hockey's a small world, right? You know, like everyone yeah. knows everyone knows everyone. So, but uh, no, it's been fun, and it's fun to come to the rink. You know, there's good um, it's good atmosphere. You guys are working hard, and uh, no, it's been fun so far. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So uh, you, you were talking about, I mean, it, you obviously love the sport of hockey. I mean, and I'm with you on your statement that it's the best sport in the world. So yeah. after you're done playing, I mean, are you going to try to stay in hockey in some role of coaching or, or anything like that? I mean, what? Absolutely. The- Absolutely. Yeah. In the summer, I, I coach a little bit, you know, I do private lessons for kids. And uh, so I, I love, I love being on the ice and, you know, whatever knowledge I have and I acquire during my time playing hockey, if I can give it back to like a kid, you know, and transfer my, my passion to a kid, I'll try to do so. But yeah, in the summer I, I, I give lessons and I coach a little bit and I, I try to stay involved in the game. Yeah. But it's That's definitely awesome. something that I want to do when, uh, when I hang him up. Yeah. 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 So you, you also got your own little clothing line through field pass with, uh, you got some t-shirts and some hoodies and stuff that, uh, yeah. that, that, uh, I think it started last season or was it the season it before? Did. Was I, it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was last season. Yeah. I think so. Uh, yeah. Doing a lot of commercial for Birmingham. There was uh, the catchphrase I used to say, uh, Oh, didn't see you there. Yeah. You know? And that really caught on. Uh, I would, People would say to me after the game and, you know, at team events or, or whatnot, oh, hey, didn't see you there. Yeah. People would call me KCK there. So, uh, you know, they kind of feel pass and Mr. Coons kind of try to to brand that, you know. And with field pass, it was a good opportunity for me to just to have fun with it, you know, and roll with it. Yeah, yeah definitely. And T-shirts, hat and hoodies and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's yeah. Good. Yeah, and it's still out there. So if anybody listening and wants any of this, you go to fieldpassbrand.com, not fieldpass hockey, fieldpassbrand.com. Yeah, and uh, uh, I even I even got the yeah, golf yeah. bolo to to represent that. Yeah, there's all kinds of good stuff on there. So yeah, yeah definitely. But uh I mean, I don't, uh, I don't, I mean, you got anything you wanted to add? I mean, I, I know you you said you had a few things you wanted to say. I don't know if we covered it all or not. Uh I mean the the Australian the Australia story was a uh, it was a pretty. Uh, it was it was one I needed to get out there for because uh, it's a pretty quirky story. But yeah, uh, that's that's probably one of the best ones I've heard on this podcast so far. So that's yeah, that's a good one. It goes into into so much more detail, but uh, well, <laughs> we'll try to keep it uh, PG for uh, for the most part. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, no, it's been good, man. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I mean, I'm glad to see that you're you're finding your way there in Knoxville and having 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 a good time out there. And I mean, scoring game winning goals in overtime. I mean, and yeah. and like I said, Knoxville is one of my favorite teams to watch. I, I love watching that team play. And uh, and and whenever I heard you were getting traded over there, I knew that you'd probably slide right in. And 
And if the Knoxville fans didn't get to know you yet, they really need to get to know you. And and I mean, well, they will, yeah, for sure. yeah, because I mean, it's it's uh, you guys out there listening. If you, I, I only got like three or four listeners, I think. But uh, if you guys are, if any of you are in Knoxville, I mean, you got to you you, you got to get to know this guy. <laughs> so. It's a good location too. It's close to Nashville. I went to a game um, earlier last week, yeah. So it's you know, it's a quick drive. Yeah, back and forth drive for a game, so it's a pretty good location. Yeah, yeah. I almost wore my cowboy hat in the interview. <laughs> yeah, man. we'll have to get you on again, and you can wear it. We we can uh, when you're playing in Australia, I'll stay up all night so uh, so that we can record uh, during your day, and you can uh, you can you can have a kangaroo in the background and everything. We'll get it all going. <laughs> that would be something, huh? Yeah, that would be a good one. We can uh, we could do that. Absolutely, <laughs> so. I'd be up for that. But uh, but yeah, man, I don't I don't have anything else, you know. I don't want to take up any more of your time. I, I really appreciate you coming on, and that's and, been uh, awesome. I look at my notes here to see if I if I missed anything, but uh, I don't think I did. No, no, no. Well, good deal, yeah. good deal. We got it all yeah. covered. So yeah, if you think good. anything, I mean, just hit me up. We'll, we'll we'll do it again sometime later on this season. So absolutely, I, I love that. That was much yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and best of luck to you the rest of the year, man, and the and the team, and and uh, I I mean, like I said, I look forward to look forward to seeing you on the ice. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, have have a good one, man. You too. Thank you. All right, there you have it, Casey Kolzicki, Kolcheski. See, I don't know, I'm screwing it up already. So I don't know, I don't know if I'm ever going to used to saying it that way, but uh, but we'll 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 see. I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best for him. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy that as much as I did. Uh, it's a great interview. He's a great guy, and uh, he just brings fire and passion to the team on the ice. So if uh, if you haven't caught a game with him involved in it, uh, I'm sure your team has played against him. So so uh, I mean, you know who he is. So uh, like I said, it's fun to watch. Fun team to watch that he plays for. Everything about it's a good time. So. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed it. So we're going to move on here. And uh, we got a couple more things. I got uh, Brad Harrison. He's going to jump on here in just a second. And we're going to do a little bit of talking about the league. And then we're going to we're going to reveal the uh, SPHL All-Star team from the fan vote poll that uh, I have been spamming you guys and the rest of us here at Field Pass Hockey have been spamming you guys on social networks to vote on. And the results are pretty awesome. I can't wait to wait, wait to bring them out for you with Brad. So with no uh, without further ado, uh, here's Brad. Brad, how you doing, man? Not bad. How about yourself? Oh, no complaints here, man. I'm uh, I'm having a good day. It's uh it's a Tuesday, not a Monday, so I'm I'm not complaining. So and uh yeah, yeah. I mean, how's things going in making? Besides, we're not going to talk about uh how the team at the moment. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, it's funny, you know, with on uh, Casey earlier, you know, because you know you know, the weekend before his pass when I mean, um, Macon gave Knoxville really all they wanted. That yeah. weekend, I mean, they got five out of six points. They beat Birmingham the first night really convincingly. And, um, and against Knoxville, they, I mean, they lost an overtime one night and got, and that overtime loss was, by the way, Casey Kuzeki, Kuzeki, however you want to say his name now. Uh, <laughs> or Casey, Casey K. Let's call him Casey K. Um, yeah, there we go. He got the game where on that Friday night game in the next night, make him one. And, and you really felt like, I mean, you you wondered, you know, is this a different making making team? And then this past weekend, it was the other side of the coin. And then I think the other aspect I think was that um, I think the way the I don't know what happened. I don't know if maybe um, I don't know if maybe on um, um, the Birmingham coaching staff read the Old Testament after that Thursday night game or not. But ever since that loss to Macon, I mean, it's like a portal got opened up. Yeah, yeah, they were playing. Uh, nothing. Were playing I, don't know, I don't know if maybe they felt Birmingham felt like we did not play very well and we're going to adjust some things or not. But yeah, ever since that loss, that seemed, um, uh, Bur- the Bulls have kind of, um, turned a corner there. I mean, you, yeah. I mean, you, you beat Huntsville and Pensacola in one weekend in this league. That's, that's saying something. And shut them both out, too. Right. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's two other. shutouts. That's, yeah, yeah that's, not, then, uh, that's not, not, not an easy feat to do in this league. And then losing losing to Fayetteville, I mean, uh, that was all a r- really bad first period. The rest of the game looked much like the rest of the weekend, but uh, but yeah. So, but um, but yeah. I mean, let's. Uh, I want to keep the fans waiting because I want them to listen to this thing. So let's kind of let's 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 walk through this last game's we uh, last weekend's games real quick if we can here, if you don't mind, and and kind of kind of give me some. 
let's, let's tell let's tell the four listeners what we think about this stuff. So we had some pretty dang exciting games. I mean, uh, Friday night you had uh, Fayetteville and Knoxville, and uh, that game Fayetteville started out they were uh, they had the lead at one point, and then Knoxville did Knoxville things, and they took that over. And Knoxville just seems to be rolling right now, man. I don't I don't even know. It's just they're just they're 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 on a war path with everybody they they go through right now and and Fayetteville's a good team and to and to, to come back from behind in my opinion that was a that was a heart win for Knoxville but uh but then uh what else did we have that was a good game on Friday night uh, well Huntsville and Roanoke they put on a good series over Maybe, the weekend. That, that's been you know Roanoke's really a team that is is uh, has been up and down this year but when they're up yeah. they're pretty t- they're t- pretty tough to match i mean yeah. they're very and the thing I think that scares you, and, and I think if any of our listeners are from Peoria, they can attest to this. I mean, if you if you're facing a hot and cold team, if you face that, if that team gets hot against you in the playoffs, you're you're in trouble. You're yeah. in trouble. I mean, that, and that's I mean, you know, because especially in the best of three series, you know, that's one of the criticism is in this league of best of three series is that it really affords the opportunity. If your goalie gets hot for two or three games, it's game over. Yeah, you're gonna and win, you're going to win. You're going to win that series. Yeah, and we both know Radebush can get hot. He did it last right. year, so, right? I mean, right. It's, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, well, and then Huntsville, you know, they pulled that one off on Friday night, and then they lost the second one. Does it? Did, what, what do you? What do you think is going on in Huntsville? I mean, is, do you think it's just call ups? And, and we all know Kaiser got suspended. Uh, I mean, what do? You, how do you feel things are going? Because it just seems like they're kind of falling off. Yeah, it's the tradition. I think is a lot of. It. I mean, I mean, because I mean, the players they were on that run. But I think earlier this year when Huntsville had that run, you're thinking, okay, they're fortunate so far. They hadn't had a lot of guys called up, yeah. and I think there's a correlation over the last couple weeks because you have guys who are called up who are on the level of the guys that are called up. Uh, you know, it's one thing if it's a guy who's just a role player who gets called up for a couple games, but I mean, you know. Your goalie's been called up in Huntsville, and um, the fact that he got, I think he got player of the week in the ECHL this past week. Yeah, he did. That's a pretty good sign. He's not, folks, he's probably, unless something crazy happens, uh, folks, he's not going to be coming back. For yeah, a while. yeah. Max is but, probably going to stay where yeah. he's at. So, yeah, yeah. I, I can't blame him. I, mean, I think if you're a Huntsville fan, you're obviously going to be happy for happy for guys like that because that's been really the – the book on Huntsville the last couple of years, why they're so good. So you have so many guys there. They have that core group that have played together for so long. Yeah. And that's been a strength of theirs. So I think uh, it's been a bit of an adjustment for them, I think. And it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how they can pivot here going forward over there. Yeah, definitely. Too. Definitely. I mean, I think, uh, you know, like because of that veteran core, I feel like, you know, even though, but I mean, they're a team that can definitely drop a game against Roanoke and then come back and sweep the next weekend. There's no doubt in my mind. So I, I feel like saying they fell off was kind of the wrong thing yeah. to say, but they're losing a few more games than what we've yeah. seen them lose. They're, they're showing that they're human. They're right. not a machine out there anymore. So, um, but yeah, so then, um, Another game we had Friday was uh, the team you cover, uh, Macon and, and Birmingham, and that was after Birmingham had uh, come off. They uh, they had beat – the when they lost to Macon was the week before, right? Or was the night before. Or the night before. Okay, yeah, night before, not week, sorry. But so so they um, – so then that game, Macon uh, – it was it was a very physical game, in my opinion. I, I don't think I've seen these two teams really at each other's throats as hard as I seen them play that Friday night. You know, Caleb Cameron was getting in there. It seemed like every time something was going on, Caleb Cameron was a part of it. And and I mean, it was it was. Uh, I I don't think Macon played a bad game. I think Birmingham just had a few extra bounces go their way. And I mean, I'd say so. David Nippard, you know, he's not known for scoring goals and he scores two goals in that game. And, and, uh, it was, it was because he was on the podcast last week. So I'm, I'm sorry so. guys. <laughs> so, so in case he gets a hat trick this weekend, we know why. Yeah, exactly. That's the way you're, That's you're I welcome Knoxville. Yeah. I keep telling everybody the last, cause you know, Caleb ended up getting what was his hundredth career point yeah, or, I'm and, uh, and he got a, any, any scored right after. He, so, I mean, it's, it's not, I, I, I'm, I'm equal opportunity, you know, come on the podcast, <laughs> no, but, uh, but, but yeah, so that game, uh, that was, that was a game where 
you know, I, I, I was obviously at the game and I felt like Macon could just make a comeback because it was just so close the whole way. Macon's playing pretty good defensive hockey. And with, with the fact that Kelly got called up uh, and, and they're playing with uh, st- still a lot of Michael Stelias is their main guy, and then they've got the brotherly connection too with um Huss. Greg Hussey, who yeah. is um, Brandon Hussey's uh, sibling. He's also on the roster too, so he's kind of sitting the backup role. And um, you know, the Saturday before this past one against Knoxville, he had a pretty good game, and um, you know, this past Saturday um, uh, for making against Hunt Pensacola, um, you know, um. <laughs> If we've got any <clears throat> fans out there of Luke Combs, um, there's a song when it rains it pours. That was that was yeah. that was how it went Saturday night for making yeah. against Pensacola <laughs> and the other way around for 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 Pensacola. It was just a thing of everything snowballed, snowballed as a yeah. game. I mean, I, I think making did score more goals than the third period than uh Pensacola. So if you're a Mayhem fan, you can take that as a um yeah moral victory, but yeah, it was a case for just for making uh, things did not go very well. And they went very well for Pensacola. Yeah, it was crazy. And, um, and I had to go back nothing. and look, I mean, the, you know, ever, you know, ever since that streak started, uh, you go back to last year, um, making lost 2-0 in the president's cup finals last year, the Pensacola, and they become a bit of a nemesis for the mayhem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that was just a ridiculous game, and uh, for those of you that have been in a closet for the past uh, past weekend, I mean they Pensacola broke the record for most goals scored in a game by beating Macon thirteen to four. At, at one point in the second period, it was ten to nothing. And then Macon finally got one on, and Macon did outscore them in the third period. They got three, Pensacola only got two, but I mean thirteen freaking goals. <laughs> I mean, that's just, there was what two hat tricks in that game. Yeah, from I mean, Pensacola. That's, that's a- I mean. That's a case where if it was pro wrestling, um, Jim Ross would be screaming to somebody stop the match. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just it crazy. Was, I mean, it was I, – I don't know. I mean, Pensacola was just feeling it is, is, yeah. is the best way I can put that one. And and then, uh, I don't know, that was there was a lot of goals scored that night. I mean, because uh, Evansville ended up scoring five against uh, Quad City. And Huntsville – or Roanoke got five against Huntsville. I mean, that was – Saturday, there was something in the water because you Knoxville got five against Vermilion County. I mean, I, Saturday, if you were a fan of goal scored, you, I mean, th- that was the day to watch game. <laughs> hey, if you if you like bidding on um, goal score pucks, you're yeah. fixed. This you're, it's about to be a really good time for you pretty soon here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, who else do I do we want to want to talk about? Well, I, I kind of want to talk about the standings to be honest with you. So. A couple of weeks ago, Huntsville was up. Uh, they had a ten point lead over Quad City in the in the sitting in second place, and now we got Huntsville sitting at fifty two points with Knoxville with fifty one, and Quad City's fallen off to forty one points. Is is Quad City kind of falling away? Are they kind of what what what's going on there in your opinion? Well, you know, the biggest thing I think, yeah, they got a few call ups, and the biggest thing they have there is in go- is in goal. To be honest with you, you know, Bailey yeah. Birkin was solid for them in that he got called up. Yeah. Um that didn't help him. And uh, you know, Pierre De Salvo was released, which was still mysterious on the surface of of the timing of that. Um <laughs> you know, just I mean, you know, I mean I need to talk to our writer in Quad Cities and kind of um ask 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 Anna up there uh who covers the the, the, the storm force ask what she's here on the ground up there. You know, I'd be yeah. curious to know too there because yeah it, but it's kind of like you know, and uh, you know, as I said earlier in the year, the interesting thing is going to be you're almost segmented up between Peoria, Quad City, Vermilion County, and uh, and Evansville. So you're you're almost those are the teams you have to do. You have to beat those teams consistently to to do much. You know, I don't I don't think it really is that much of an indictment on Quad Cities as a, as a team. No, you know, they still got a lot of good cast members up there who can uh, yeah. score goals and make plays. But uh, you know, it's just. And, and as we saw with Huntsville, anytime you lose a solid goaltender, you know, the best teams in minor league hockey will be the ones who can sustain call-ups. And I think we're about to find out um, that that trait for multiple teams here in the next few weeks. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, and, and you're you're right. You nailed it. I mean, goaltending. It seems like at one point both all their goaltenders were called up, and then they were they all came back, and that's whenever they had. I think they had four on the four or five on the roster at that point, and so somebody had to go. And I guess DeSalvo, like you said, the the, the veteran all time uh, leader in wins is uh, he's the one that's waived. But yeah. you don't know. I mean, none of us really know what there was. Maybe maybe he was done. I know he did say this was his last season playing when I had him on uh, the podcast to start the season. So. Maybe uh, maybe that's what it was. But, yeah, Anna might have some more insight well, for us. Well, and the interesting thing is this, too. Remember, early in the year, Peoria was near the bottom of the standings. And yeah, they are three points back of Quad City in fourth place right now. So Yeah, yeah. Um, just, rumors of their demise were greatly exaggerated. And then at one point behind it was Fayetteville. I mean, it's going to be – you know, because about five weeks ago, I think we had – there were some probably fans around the league who were probably jumping the gun and said, Okay, the playoff the playoff seeds are over. Everything is set. It's going to be one of two teams for first. Yeah, everyone else for the rest of the spots, and three teams at the bottom. Now, I mean, you look at the standings right now. The middle um, of the standings has been crazy. I mean, the middle of the standing. I mean, you know, third place through um, through seventh is separated by seven points right now. Yeah, I mean, and you got one point differential differential at the top, and. And truth be told, you look at eighth place Evansville. I mean, Birmingham's only twelve points out, and you one. It's so if Birmingham make gets on a run and then Evansville slumps for a couple games, you got a dog five that playoff spot, that playoff spot too. So yeah, definitely. You know, this this deal is there is nothing wrapped up right now. No, not at all. And uh, as as we record this, uh, well, I guess about an hour from now, uh, Evansville and Peoria are going to face off, and. Uh, I think Evansville's feeling the heat on the back of their neck. Whenever Birmingham started putting together, stringing together a couple of wins, I mean, Birmingham's really had a pretty good uh, start to 2022. And, and uh, you know, Evansville turned it around this weekend. So they, they, they've been kind of in a slump, but they, uh, they've they won their last two games. And I think, like I said, I think they might feel that heat coming on them. So, and, and you know, another thing, I mean, you say Birmingham, and, and I could see, you know, Macon, Macon can score goals. They, they, they uh, they're they're doing things right, but it just seems like well, with the exception of getting thirteen scored on them. I mean, Macon uh, Macon's another team that you just feel like you know they they could catch wind and and they could make a run for eighth. Yeah, I mean if if you see, you know and if the Macon team you saw against Knoxville, if they play on that level the rest of the year, I mean it's going to be a case where if Macon doesn't make the postseason, there it becomes a case where in those last two weeks they can get in the mode of. Okay, if we we may not be able to make the postseason, but we're playing somebody who's trying to, so we can mess up. Yeah, we can mess up what we can mess up their plans. Yeah, we can jack the standings I mean, up. You know, it's like um, I mean, it's like um, on the NFL side a couple weeks ago where you have that chaos on the last Sunday of the season, and it started when the Colts lost to a two and fourteen Jacksonville team that no one thought was going to happen. Yeah, so uh. So, I'm yeah, still so I think for making in Vermilion, I mean, it'll be something else if theoretically, if toward the end of the season, Evansville is trying to hang on for dear life and the new kill on the block for Vermilion County is able to prevent them from making the postseason. Yeah, yeah, because that's definitely, I mean, that's one of the teams that uh, the Bobcats play a lot is Evansville. I mean, all those yeah. teams up north are playing each other a lot more frequently than they come down here. Yeah. So. So they could play the role of spoiler, or, yeah. or who knows? I mean, like I said, it's you. You, you kind of, I mean, you know, Hunts, Huntsville and Knoxville—they're both pretty close to clinching playoff spots, and that's that's bad. That's, that's that's weird to say, you know, when we're barely halfway into the season. But I think, uh, I think Huntsville only needed. Oh, I had it figured out the other day, but I think they only needed like six more points or something, and they would at least clinch at bare minimum eighth place in the playoffs. So. So you kind of know the top two, three teams, they're gonna they're gonna be in it, but everything below that, well, not even three. I mean, it's just it's it's a very close league right now. Every game definitely matters. And uh these teams that were struggling, you know, Birmingham, Macon, Vermilion County that kind of struggled to start the season off, you know, they they really need to start stringing together, you know, eight wins in a row to catch things yeah. back up. I mean, it's it's tough, but uh I mean that's have, really yeah, I mean. Yeah, have the team watch American Underdog on the next um, bus trip when they were to start streaming. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, so uh, 
that's really it. I did. I didn't want to go too deep into the league uh, this week because I know uh, we have uh, we have our all star vote reveal and uh, and you guys. Um, you know, we've all been spamming you guys on Twitter. Uh, I've been doing it on Instagram. I don't know if everybody else has been and, you know, Facebook and groups and whatnot and trying to get you guys to vote. And you guys definitely came out and voted. What do we, we had almost 8,000 votes all together. Isn't that what it yeah, was? I, I, yeah. Cause I could tell you our, our fans at SBHL this, that cause um, as you all may or may not know for field pass hockey, we also cover the East coast hockey league yeah. as well as the AHL. And I and our um right and our writers for the AHL, our team is already in awe of thinking, oh my gosh, how are we going to top how many people voted? Yeah, for the SPHL. So so a big hats off to all of our SPHL fans for just getting involved. I mean, you know, some of the SPH, you know, people in in other hockey uh, leagues may look down on the SPHL because it's a smaller markets in places. But uh, I think what we've seen the past week is on uh, there. It's really hard to match the passion. Of a lot of, of the fan bases across across the SPHL. I mean, if our fans are in the range, you see it every night, and I think um, more people online have seen that same energy uh, in the past week. Yeah, as, uh, yeah, as reflected because it's been it's been fun. Uh, no, just kind of see the movement and, and how fans have gotten behind voting for players and everything. Yeah, and I mean, it started out with like Quad City was just running everything. You know, they were leading all the boards, and then uh, a late game changer that kind of shocked the heck out of me today to see who uh who took the number one forward spot right. which which uh you know i i got to watch him play early in the season i'm not gonna say his name just yet but i got to watch him play and i thought he was a good player too but uh but you can definitely tell that uh, this is a fan vote and uh mm-hmm. to 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 see but uh, i'll go ahead i'll let you uh i'll let you announce who the we got um we the way that it worked out i'll, I'll let everybody knows we had 12 forwards is, is what's going to be on the team seven defensemen and three goaltenders is how it all played out okay. so uh the number one guy who was it houston wilson for milk from vermilion county houston wilson he got 20.7 percent of the votes yeah, and there was he edged out marcus ortiz from quad city who had 18.78 uh, third place behind him was from Huntsville with um, Tower P and Centini with 10.8%. Uh, Wheeling Parish from Pensacola was fourth with 7.2%. Uh, Mike Davis from Birmingham at 6.8%. He was in fifth place. Uh, um, as uh, one of those mentioned earlier um, um, from Peoria, um, J.M. Piotrowski, he was in sixth place with 5.2%. Another one from Jake from Huntsville was Jacob Barber. He had 4.8%. Eighth place was Shane Bennett from Quantities with 3.7%. Joey Strada from Knoxville um, had three point, he had 3% ninth. Um, Alec Hageman from Peoria, he timed in 10th with 2.5%. Austin Plevy from Evansville, he was at 25 and then Jeff Jones from Roanoke at 2.5. Um, obviously, the Houston Wilson jumping up there toward the end surprised you. Anything else jump out to you there? Uh, I was kind of shocked that uh, that Jacob Barber didn't land higher and Alec Hageman. I thought I thought uh, I thought the Peoria fans were gonna were gonna come at it a little bit harder, but yeah, I mean Vermilion County, you the Bobcat fans came through in the end, and uh, I mean that's. That's that's a little fan bragging bragging rights right there. I mean, and, and we'll kind of give you some of the stats from Houston Wilson. You know, he's he's played 24 Woo! games this year, seven goals, six assists. He he started the year out with Birmingham, but uh, I'm gonna tell you, six of those goals came once he got to Vermilion County. He's been playing really well in Vermilion County, so I'm gonna say yeah, he deserves to be on this team. But uh, I never would have figured he was going to be the number one guy. And then, uh, I mean, we got guys like Jacob Barber, you know, and, you know, he's got 45 points. He's second in scoring. He's, he leads the league in goals. And uh, you got uh, Alex Hageman, who's 41 points. He's got, uh, he leads, he's uh, third in the SPHL in scoring and he's down there in 10th. But I know, I know everybody outside of Peoria f- tends to not like Hageman too much. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess I can see, uh, but you can't vote against a player. That uh, by him being down there, that just tells me not enough Peoria fans were voting. Right. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, there was um, you know Shane Bennett in Quad City. He uh, he he uh, he's he's got some pretty co- good stats. He leads his team in scoring. He's a plus seven. There was somebody on here that had a plus minus rating that was just out of this world that I seen. And let me look back and see. Maybe it was in the defensemen. So. 
not uh, not here. So yeah, no. And uh, an honorable mention for also for the forwards, the guy that just missed it was uh, Zach Lambrick from from uh, Macon. He had two point four three percent, fallen uh, behind Jeff Jones of Roanoke who had that 2.5. So he's an honorable mention, you know, he's a, he's a scratch, you know, he'll be a healthy scratch in the, in the imaginary all-star game we got going on. But uh, that's, that's a pretty mean, um, pretty mean forward group you got right there. I'd, I'd, I'd pay to watch that team play. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move on uh, defenseman now. All right. And we're going to make it a little bit dramatic here. We're going to reverse on defense, but we're going to start from the bottom. Um, your healthy scratch, if you will, for defenseman was Brandon Lubin from Evansville with 4.1% of the vote. Uh, seventh was Jason Price from Knoxville. The veteran the veteran makes his way onto the all-star team here. Uh, Dalton, Dalton Young from Pensacola with 6.6%. He was the sixth. Uh, the, big, the big physical um, message sender from Roanoke, Travis Armstrong at 9.1%. That was good for fifth. Um, Macon gets into it in fourth place here with Kyle Sober. He had 9.8%. Uh, Steve Alvo from Birmingham, he had 13.7%. That was good for third. Second place was Joe Sober from Quad Cities. He had 24.7%. And in first place, um, you know, Huntsville fans, y'all been vocal about the free Kaiser movement <laughs> in the last couple of weeks. And that right. energy apparently got channeled into the vote because with – 25.7% of the vote, Nolan Kaiser was the top vote getter for defenseman. Yeah, Nolan Kaiser for the free Kaiser movement. We 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 got him in on this. He's actually gonna be back this weekend playing finally after his long suspension. So yeah, that uh that that, that was pretty cool to see. And you know, this was another one just like the forward group. Uh Quad City, you know, uh Marcus Ortiz was leading the forwards for most of this poll up until today, and uh Nolan Kaiser pulled ahead. I think I seen it yesterday, but uh Sova was leading that. <laughs> And so, uh, so people rallied and came in. So let's, let's go over a couple of stats here real quick on this one. So Jason Price, uh, that's the plus minus rating. That's ridiculous that I wanted to bring up. The dude's a plus 32. He leads the SPHL, all players, not just defensemen. I mean, and, and I know uh, we're talking about Huntsville. I know you guys hate him from uh, an incident uh, a long, long time ago, but uh but that's an impressive uh, plus minus rating for a defenseman. And it, I guess it just shows you what Knoxville's doing kind of goes back to the interview before, mm -hmm. but um, and then uh, we got uh, Nolan Kaiser who's missed. What, how many games was it? Was it eight games or 10? It was, yeah. I think it may, I'm not sure. And uh, he, he's well, either way at the, to this moment on this Tuesday night that we're recording this, he leads his D he leads the t defense in scoring with uh, 20 points, four goals, 16 assists. So Definitely, uh, definitely a big deal on his team. And all these guys that you guys actually voted in are their leading scorers, the leading defensive scorers on their teams. You know, Sova leads the league. Steven Alvo, you know, uh, he's he's one of the few players on the Birmingham Bulls. If you go and look at the stat sheet of all the players, it actually is not a minus. He is a plus zero. The only person That's better impressive. than <laughs> yeah, the only person better is David Nippert, who's a plus two. But uh, but yeah, I mean. And, and these guys are all good choices. Uh, I mean, they're all they're all good, good solid D men in the league, and uh, and I, th I think you guys did a good job picking them. So I I don't know. I mean, is Kaiser going to make it back from his suspension in time for our All Star game? That's all. I want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so uh, so we had seven defensemen on the team. We got three goaltenders. Let, let, let's hear it, Brad. Who are the goal? All right. So the scratch for goaltender was Colin Kaspersky from for Million County. He got ten point two percent of the vote. Um, in third place, um, is, uh, it, if there's a veteran goaltender in this league, I think the one that is your center bear right now, as, as far as guys who are now in the league now, are, uh, is Eric Levine from Peoria. He was in third place at 12.2%. .2%. Uh, Hayden Stewart from currently at Birmingham, he got 22% of the vote to roll in second. And Hunter Vorva from Huntsville, he, he was the leading vote getter among goalies. At thirty four point nine percent. Yeah, so Huntsville fans showing out on the defensive yeah. side of thing, getting their guys in. Yeah. So I know we had less goaltenders, and kind of some teams got left out uh, from goaltending, but that's the way it goes. You guys, uh, I, I I was reading some of the comments, but uh, sometimes that's how how it all works out. And and uh, I mean, but yeah, so Hunter Vorva, who has been a pleasant supply surprise. I don't know if it was a surprise for Huntsville fans, but it, when Max Milosek went up, uh, Vorva kind of came on and. 
And, uh, you know, he's played 16 games. He leads the league in save percentage. Uh, he's tied with Jimmy Peretta, who hasn't played in a long time because he's been up doing bigger, better things. But he's got a 939 save percentage. He's 1.92 goals against 12-4, one and one's his record. Uh, he's playing great. Hayden Stewart, uh, his goals against average, 3.35. I mean, that's – the Bulls have let a lot of goals in, but uh, I actually think Hayden Stewart is a good goalie. I think that was a good choice, and I can see Birmingham fans uh, showing out because uh, the Bulls had somebody in each uh, each each category. But uh, he uh, Stewart actually leads the league in shutouts. He's got three this year. Nobody else has three, so that's a cool stat. And he's got a 90.901 uh, save percentage. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. Levine, who's always solid, like you said, veteran goaltender, he uh, – 22 games, 2.26 goals against, 14-5, 1-1, one one, uh, 925 save percentage. And he is at, he, he is second in the league in minutes played. So he's uh, he's definitely the backbone of that team. They use him a lot. Um, that, was, uh, that was good. And then Kaspersky, the reason he didn't make it is because he got called up again. That's what we're going to go with. It seems like every time I turn around, that dude's getting called up. <laughs> so that's why he didn't make it. So... Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's it. So let me give you guys a quick rundown of you know by team and um, Fayetteville fans. Shame on you for not voting. I, there is not a single Fayetteville marksman player on this roster, and shame on you, Fayetteville fans. You didn't vote for your guys. I mean, there's tons of good guys. Tanner Freeze. I mean, Matt McNair. All these guys that you could have voted in and you didn't. So shame on you. Next year, you're gonna have to show out. You're gonna have to get your guys in because you didn't get anybody. So. Uh, there was four teams that got three players, Birmingham, Huntsville, Quad City, and Peoria. So uh, those you can see uh, that must have been the fan base that was covering the most. Uh, Vermilion County got one, almost got a goaltender in. Roanoke had two. Pensacola had two. Macon had one. Knoxville had two. Evansville had one. And uh, that's it. But, yeah, is, is it shocking to you that Fayetteville didn't get a guy in? I mean. Yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, you never know sometimes. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. um. I don't know. Maybe we need to go up there and, um, you know, have a have a, have pay a visit to some of their fans, and we'll give them some bojangles or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. I mean, or, I mean gotta, if someone's going to provide the bojangles for for me, I'll be okay with that too. That's right. That's right. We need yeah. to get need to but get yeah, that I'm market good. covered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I used yeah. to live in there. It's a great area. You know, a lot of excitement around the area. You know, the Crown Coliseum's a great building and great yeah. venue and everything. And and uh, you know, I, I think. Um, you know, you know, you go back pre-COVID, it was really setting up that year to be a really exciting year because by far that year, the best two teams were um, Peoria and Fayetteville. And literally, the stoppage happened when Peoria and Fayetteville that weekend, they were about to play each other. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, – of many things that we all – that was that um, was halted was we were about to see an incredible weekend of hiking between those two. So it would be really neat if – um, for that reason, if now that this is Fayetteville's first year back in after opting out last year, it would be really exciting if it will be a really neat story if Fayetteville was one of the teams in the in the final in the semifinals this year with a chance. Yeah, definitely, it'll, it'll definitely be a great story. That was, would be a great story for a lot, a lot of other teams as well. Yeah, yeah, Fayetteville was actually my preseason pick. <laughs> so, but but well, that's uh that's about it. I think that's all we got for everybody. Um, I uh, I hope you guys are happy with your results, and uh, I'm sorry I made you guys listen to the whole podcast to get them, but uh, I know you guys turn it off after the players, so so uh, I had to, I had to weasel you in to play into listening a little bit longer this week. So, but uh, yeah, we got a we got a great slate of games coming up again this weekend, and we'll talk about them next week, and hopefully I can bring somebody on. And and trust me, Evansville, I know I keep telling you I'm going to bring a player on. I'm trying, I'm trying. I haven't forgotten about you guys, so uh, so just bear with me here. I'll have an Evansville player on before you know it, and, and you guys won't have to feel left out anymore. So, but other than that, uh, that's that's all I really got for you guys. You got anything else, Brad? No, that's pretty much it. You know, hopefully everyone's staying snake safe out there with the weather and everything you know down here in central georgia we almost had we had flurries this past week so that was that's as close to hockey weather as we get down here and <laughs> yeah that's you right. know it, it's it's bedlam if if a four if there's a few flurries so hopefully everyone is um staying well and um staying safe and uh for those fans traveling um home and away um safe travels and well wishes at, during the upcoming weekend 
That's right. All right. Well, until next time, everybody.